praying to the stream gods. Hello, everyone! Hello, hello, and welcome to The Sound! Hey, Kyle Walls, you're my special guest here today. I was playing my theme songs there for everybody. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Kyle Wall, singer, songwriter, and guitarist. I'm so happy to have you on today. Ah, uh, this is fun. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> hey, shout out to Grunge Grumpy. He's here. All good right. friend of mine here. Um, so I just wanted to give him a shout out. We're we're having a good time here. And and I wanted to let everybody know that um, the black screens are fixed. If you were here before and you saw the black screen, um, now not only can you see the video, but you can see us too, and we stay pretty big. It's, it's pretty cool. This is really fun. I, I just I just can't thank all you guys enough for being here with me through all my, all my mistakes, all my screw ups, you know, because I'm I'm here in my in my early development of streaming stage, and um, man, you guys are so loving and supportive. I thank you guys so much for your likes, for your shares, for your subscriptions. Every time that little sound comes up. And and I see that little guy running. I swear, my heart <laughs> skips a beat. And I'm like, yeah, thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let, let's get going here. Um, I got a little bit longer one picked here for this next one. I hope that's all right with you. Sure. Um, this was actually a request in the chat. And this was actually also something that I was planning to do um, anyway. And um, it goes along with um, this whole um, vein of voice lessons we're going to be reacting next to uh, Nightwish Singer reacts to Ghost Love Score, Vakken 2013. So we're going to get to see Floor uh, talking about uh, her performance at this legendary concert. We're going to get to hear the singer reacting to herself. Nice. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Um, do you have any questions or comments you wanna you wanna say before we start this? It's kind of a long one. No, um, no. Let's 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 do it. All right. So, without further ado, music teacher and Kyle Walls react to Nightwish singer reacts the reaction to a reaction <laughs> <laughs> of Ghost Love Score Vodka 2013. Are you ready? Nice. Yes. All right, here we go! Hello and welcome to this reaction to a reaction video. It's maybe a new concept, but it would be really weird, I think, to react to a song I did myself. However, I'd like to let you know I've been enjoying a lot of the reaction videos out there. I think it's great that Ghost Love Score was picked up by the masses, really, and... Um, yeah, I just wanted to give you my personal insight behind this song. Now, I'm not going to run through the whole thing like in a, in a regular video, because what am I going to say? Oh, yeah, I remember doing this or that, or, uh, yeah, you know, it's me doing this uh, with, of course, my, my brothers in, in arms in Nightwish. So um, I'd like to kind of give you a, a bit of the technical behind the story kind of thing and maybe a couple of memories that pop up. We're going to listen to Ghost Love Scroll version of uh, Lock and Open Air. So that was 2013. It's quite a few years ago, but uh, as far as I know, it's one of your favorites. So that's why we go through this song. And I'm not going to start right from the beginning. I'm going to start where I start singing. And, uh, well, I'll be reacting a little bit to that. There we go. drinking his beer. <laughs> of course. Okay. Um, first of all, Vak and Open Air. 80,000 people in front of me. Yeah, I was a bit nervous. Uh, it was one of the biggest things uh, that I've ever done, and at that time, uh, the biggest thing. I knew we were recording it. Um, yeah, the, the, the pressure was so humongous and it was fantastic to just come out on stage and feel like the music just took over and we were going to play this song and, you know, of course this was towards the end. The whole show was just magic and I'm still so proud of how this song turned out. Um, now in this very beginning you have all the excitement that comes with this song, the anticipation of it, now we're going to do it. 
but still I need to sing quite little. I can't just Rah! it has to it has to be delicate. So that would be one of the biggest challenges to kind of get all those feelings into singing the right words and the right with the right emotion without overdoing it and um yeah that comes with a lot of control yeah. both up here a little bit of an echo call because i don't want it to sound too okay. massive it needs to start delicate and light uh, and from there we go into this part Well, there I really go into this this operatic voice without making it too too round, too operatic. Uh, it's a bit of a lighter touch of like the head voice, um, which I found very fitting to um, to the song. Of course, in the original, that's also used. But I I've been trying to give different kinds of colors to the different emotions and part of the story in this song. Um, and so here. I try to not make it too operatic, but with a nice touch there. And um, yeah, for me, this is one of the favorite parts of the song, really. It's, it's yeah, it just gives me the goosebumps to sing it. You can even see it in the beginning where I just close my eyes and let it come out. It's uh, uh, a joy to sing. Continue. <laughs> I just love the way that Empu comes by and just touches everybody in a small little gesture. Um, that's something you don't rehearse, that's something not made, that just happens and that vibe and feeling is it's very precious. Um, actually in the singing way it, it continues in a, in a delicate balance between expression and not too heavy singing. So I want to really tell the story and use a lot of dynamics and shifts in vocal styles and types to, to color as you hear um, and maybe also that the second time that this, this, these long notes come over the choir part, um, I start singing a little bit stronger. Uh, and a little bit less operatic, unless I go until I go to end, towards the end uh, to the blue memory where, where I really power up a little bit to then put the brakes back on and just slide into the next tiny part that comes now. Shout out Andy. <laughs> to just stop the solo wonderful to see the crowd also i mean i'm reacting to what i'm singing but i'm also reacting to how, how you guys were out there in the audience just feeling it with me that interaction despite the huge distance that we have on on huge festivals like wakken where yeah there's a big part of me if, in front of me of stage and then there's a barrier and security and um 
yeah, then thanks to the cameras, you can actually uh, see even more, see how, how everybody's feeling it, because this song is feeling its emotion. And uh, um, what I also noticed that's maybe funny to tell is that throughout the years, I did start singing it a little bit different as I, as I did uh, in 2013. Um, different nuances. It's, it's small things, really, uh, but the biggest... Uh, thing for me in telling the story of, of this part of the song is constantly playing between the dynamics a little bit fuller voice more chest voice more light head voice and uh, Really try to speak the word so you hear what I'm saying without exaggerating so that it becomes just technical and uh, yeah, I mean, when it comes to that, this song is really challenging, and that's also why it's cool to react to this and, and go through through the whole thing with you guys. If I may go back in time with you, 2013, uh, first time Wacken Open Air with Nightwish. Um, I already told you I was really, really, really nervous, but um, I, I have very fond memories of just being there and... Um, uh, the enthusiasm of the audience and the way that everything just came together on that stage that night, I think you can still feel it in, in the video of this song and in our DVD made of that entire show uh, that night. And uh, I will cherish that forever. I'm so grateful that there is such a you know memory of this. It's immortalized, as I said it on stage, uh, like it is. Okay, we, we just jump over the beautiful uh, instrumental and uh, continue. more expression, more power. Um, it repeats itself twice uh, and it builds up instrumentally. There's a difference between the first and the second time. And also vocally, I want to emphasize that dynamic change by, uh, well, powering up even more. And um, yeah, it just has this really nice groove and feel to it. That's really, yeah, I want to pick that up in the vocals too. And um, yeah. We continue into the next part. Right, that was um, a little bit of heavy opera singing along with the choir um, and a very expressive, almost theatrical, um, okay, <laughs> the dog just sat on the light. All right, a little bit of opera, very dramatic, very almost theatrical uh, part in the song where expression and power just needs to be there. And... Um, uh, yeah, you can really feel that the whole song is building up. I'm shifting from a very strong operatic voice to a full uh, chest voice or belting voice. Before I continue talking about this particular version of uh, uh, Ghost Love Score, I have to take you back in time before this actually was recorded and, and to how the ending of the song came to be. Because it was a spontaneous thing. I don't know if I, I must have told you in, in an interview here or there, but um, before I joined Nightwish, this was always already one of my favorite songs. And I always heard things in the end that I kind of sang along. If I, if I ever sang along with a song, it kind of freestyled into that direction of what it became. And um, as soon as I started to uh, get more comfortable on stage and knowing the songs uh, with Nightwish, I started to kind of freestyle during the, uh, uh, the rehearsals during the day or like with sound checks and stuff. And um, at some point I just went for it. And it, I didn't do that before because I didn't feel comfortable enough with, with what I was doing myself. Nobody was holding me back or anything, but 
as soon as I started, you know, freestyling, the rest of the band was like, that's kind of cool. We can try that tonight on the show. And so I did. And one of the first times I, uh, I really sang it was in South America um, with that first tour we did together. And it just exploded. Everybody loved it. And it, it sort of fell into place and it became my own version of the song as a natural development into, into this song. And um, I know now many years later, it really became such a thing that, you know, Ghost Love Scores for Always on our set list. Um, and I think that's, that's super cool. So uh, we'll continue into the 2013 version of the Wacken Show. Once again, a, different, a lot of different voices are used. It's a powerful opera on those ha, ha, ha. To get the timing right was a little bit of practicing. You, you really, really want to just do that right. And now it's just embedded in my system. Um, but powerful opera needs to be pushed out immediately. And from that energy back into redeem me, it's almost a little bit low for me, like below where my, my power is in my voice. Um, and it shouldn't be powered, so it needs to have that exact uh, dynamics without it sounding too uh, thin. Uh, and then once again, building up towards the end where it's just a full belt that kind of introduces that last part that became so famous. Let's write that one out. stuff damn yeah there's something about that note that just I always feel it always how often I may hear it or sing it it just oof. um I kind of visualized because <laughs> in the beginning I, I I keep it a little bit smaller and then on that long note, I build it up full force opera with everything I have. And then comes the tricky part to switch from that operatic voice on the same height to a full belting voice. That I personally always find a little bit exciting because you really want to have it right. You don't want the, the voice to kind of... Uh, and uh, of course, when the high note comes, uh, it, it needs to come. It's only cool when it's really there. And um, I'm no machine, so it's, it doesn't just always happen. Um, but I do remember one show in particular, we, we have some DVD material from that, uh, that was in Colombia. We played uh, uh, a show there and we were going to record everything for DVD. We recorded a lot of it, um, but I became sick and my voice was basically gone. During the day I had high fevers and my whole body was basically shutting down. And um, yeah, it was really like... Let's see how, how it's going to be, because uh, if you can barely stand without feeling like that of the fever, then how are you going to perform a two-hour show? And there's something 
that just happens. Uh, Troy, in our band, calls it Dr. Theater. That comes up. Uh, that and uh, a, a bunch of pills to, uh, you know, suppress the, the fever and all of that. Uh, made us go on stage and then the energy, of course, of the crowd, whew, I started to feel much better. That didn't magically fix my voice, though. Um, it was still um, having a hard time, with, with the, especially with the high belting notes. So this song was, was really like, whew, let's see how it's going to be like. And this belting note in the end is basically one of the highest stuff that I have to belt out. So, and it's, it's at the very end of the show. So you're always already tired of doing everything else and you still have to have enough to have it, which is extra hard when you're sick. But it's, it felt like my body just knew what to do. And as soon as this note came, it just said, yes, I can do this. And there it was as powerful as it would have been when I'm not sick. And it felt like, wow, I don't know where that comes from in my body, but yeah, it's, it's a really fond memory of, yeah, just getting this out even under more challenging sub, uh, circumstances. Um, so yeah, it's wonderful to see how, how this note just oof, came out and um, how it just puts, puts, up, puts a spell on everybody in the crowd. It, it has something special, the way this song just builds up and, and continues after that. Ah, oh, wonderful. Uh, on that note, I'm going to thank you for watching this reaction video. I, um, I really, really look forward to performing this live, live for you guys. But um, we still have a pandemic to sit out, so let's, let's keep, uh, keep our sanity for a little while longer and our good health. Um, in just a little while, um, we have this Nightwish virtual show coming up and... Uh, as we are preparing, I can tell you it's going to be as magical as Nightwish can be. Uh, I really think it's going to be something special and uh, I hope we can meet each other at least virtually there. And uh, well, until next time though, in the real life, <laughs> on a real stage with Ghost Love Score, thank you for watching and take care. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. She, she used her floorgasm. That's, that's, that's what the fans call that that uh, part at the end that she was just talking about, that super high note. Yeah. Costume change. She used that sip of water. for her little outro screen now. That's freaking awesome. That's cool. Yeah, dude. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. She is, she is such an amazing singer, man. That's my teacher. That, that that's cool. Yeah. It's... I, I didn't start singing till I'd played guitar for a few decades before I even really thought I could try to sing. And uh, I, I'm a teacher, so the choir teacher and I, we were going to trade lessons. He's going to do vocal lessons. I was going to do guitar. Mm -hmm. And the first time we met, he, we were going through guitar and he was like, yeah, I, I, I don't have patience for guitar. So we did some vocal lessons together. And that really got me going on the right path because I wasn't in, in, in choir in school. So anyway, uh, I mentioned that. So when our, she's talking about, uh, you know, belting and stuff and, and the switches of, you know, head and chest voice, switching register and stuff, I always like hearing singers do that because, you know, it's something, you know, I every time I perform, I'm always trying to, get a little bit better, stretch myself in some way. And when she's talking about things like that and then dealing with being sick or, you know, uh, cause I, I have asthma and trying to sing with asthma. That's always, uh, sketchy, you know? Um, but anyway, um, just wondering what, what your thoughts were on her talking about belting and, and, uh, you know, switch, switching up her voice like that. Oh, absolutely. What we're going to talk about here is the, the, mainly the reason why I picked that from the request list for, for my, my rotation was because I wanted you, with as good of a singer as you are, um, to, to have this experience of not only listening to Floor um, and probably her most popular recording, um, but also getting her to hear uh, you know her thoughts about it because she's such an exceptional <coughs> teacher uh, as well as a performer and um, she explains it so beautifully um, so in my paraphrase of her words from uh, her master classes belting it's like it's like you're eating an apple so you take and you ah, ah, 
and it gives that nasal um, pharyngeal area in the nose a chance to really open up and yeah. it gives some of that like eh, kind of sound okay now one of the things about belting is it, when you're belting you got to be careful not to let your larynx rise Unless that's the sound you're going for. So what I'm talking about is my, my voice box right here, the little V, okay? Yeah. If you, if, if you raise your larynx, it makes it sound like this. And if you lower your larynx, it makes it sound like that. So basically, she's coming from that operatic form where the jaw is dropped all the way as if she was saying, oh. And, um, and while she's doing that, she's got her larynx down. So it's not just ah, but it's ah. And then she's got to kind of switch from that ah to that ah, biting the apple mouth. Yeah. Right? So she's going from hoo, 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 to ah. <clears throat> <laughs> I yeah. do not have the voice to freaking sound <laughs> anything like floor. So, yeah. you know, I'm, well, I'm a humble vocal coach here. <laughs> yeah. Well, and when she's talking about um, belting and switching to chest voice, that was because mm -hmm. what you were talking about, you know, using the, you know, sinus cavity and, and mixing in that register. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that was kind of interesting to me that she was talking about belting because I know for me personally, uh, I, like a song that I feel I can really belt out is Pride and Joy by Stevie Ray Vaughan. I can oh, yeah. and just get really into that and, and Use Me by Bill Withers. Mm -hmm. uh, th those are right in my wheelhouse. Um, but I'm, I'm totally in my head voice. Now, what, what I was thinking of when you were just talking about, um, you know, the, the, uh, your, your voice box and everything, since she's a Finnish speaker, well, I assume that since the band is from Finland, I, I'm not sure if she is. I'm guessing from her name, she she probably is. I think she's Danish, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Or, okay. Well, whatever. Because, yeah, well, those Germanic languages have, uh, you know, it, it's part of the pronunciation that you use your chest voice, you know, for those guttural sounds of the vowels that, you know, in English, we have that French influence. So, you know, um, especially being in the Midwest, you know, um, so some things when we say vowels, you know, like father, you know, come, kind of comes out my nose when I say they are dad, mm -hmm. you know. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so it's an American I, thing, American, right? <laughs> it's always funny when I, I go go to different places. Uh, to me, my St. Louis accent really comes out when I say chocolate. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> and I can't really control it, but chocolate. It's like, man. <laughs> okay, so. That goes to the lesson. Yeah. If you want to belt, right, in addition to making your mouth having that, that, that biting the apple, that, all right, you also, I said, keep a slight downward press on the larynx so it doesn't rise too much because if your larynx rises, you can lose the head voice and that would result in a sort of a pinchy sound. The goal, what we're trying to do when we're belting we're trying to keep a small amount of chest voice and keep a small amount of head voice and blend both of those with a large, powerful amount of pharyngeal or nasal voice. And that's where that eh kind of thing comes in. But a good lesson that I learned when I was in school is that a lot of times you can open up resonances in your voice by adding a tiny hint of one vowel to it, but not too much. Like yeah. a great example is overtone singing. Um, because I just love overtone singing. What if you? I think we might have talked about this briefly before. If yeah. you start on an ooh, and then you just slightly spread the corners of your mouth just the tiniest little bit, adding a, a few percentage points of e to it, you open up a whole world of new secondary tones that can start to appear on top of your note called overtones or harmonics. And these notes, these overtone notes, can then, as you move your mouth, be directed to change. So, like, you can, you know, um, almost whistle the um, bugle call yeah. while you are holding a single tone in chest voice because of the moving of the corners of the mouth. You follow me? Yeah. So, <laughs> can, 
Did, could, could you hear it? Yeah. The overtone going up and down? Yeah. You have to really, really, really listen because it's not loud. But that's one of the beautiful things that singers can do with their voice. It's like, it's like, it's like a sprinkle on top of the icing. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Because you've got your – think of a cupcake as the singing, right? So you've got your, your cake. That's your chest voice, right? And then you've got your, your icing, right? And then that'd be your head voice, right? And then you've got whatever's on top of that. That'd be your pharyngeal voice, right? Your little flavorings, your breathiness, yeah. right? So maybe you got some chocolate chips on there, <laughs> whatever's on your cupcake. <laughs> and, and, and those are the little like extra things that you're putting on top, you know? And man, Floor, she just had, I mean, overall it was a fairly operatic sound throughout, but then there's just like endless variances of the way she sang that. It was just gorgeous. And her analysis yeah. is just spot on. She's so humble. And yet at the same time, like, it's so cool to see the look on her face when she's listening to it. And she's like, wow, that, this really is like some of the best that I've ever done. And yeah. She's just like, Wow, this I you know it was like she's remembering how she felt in that moment, and it's like <laughs> contagious. It's like, yeah. Well, it's it's cool to hear uh, re recordings of yourself sometimes because sometimes when I shouldn't say sometimes a lot of times when you perform you're 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 kind of lost in the moment, mm -hmm. and and you're not being objective, and and you know it's someone that performs that's something I like. You know, it's kind of like my own little mental health area i can go somewhere where i have my own little world and nothing really matters except for the the noises or sounds i'm creating mm -hmm. and sometimes when and you mentioned like like her going back and going wow that was really neat that that worked out so well and and she's looking at it in the context of the band the context of the performance and the event and that's really neat to see the the broader scope you know afterward that that's what i really liked about how she was looking at it, you know, is how everything in context was, was such a beautiful moment. I like too, how she was also talking about how the band was sort of like interacting on stage. And like, there's this whole thing. I'm not sure exactly when in the concert, but the guitar player and floor had like a little joke thing going on. I guess at some point she dumped out his beer and refilled it with apple juice and then he, like, while they were on stage performing, he goes, take yeah. a drink of his beer, he spits it out. <laughs> it's on the video. <laughs> so she's, like, noticing, you know, that, oh, here he takes a drink of his beer. Yeah. <laughs> Those you things know? are awesome. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it, 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 hum it humanifies. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's so easy, especially with this culture in America, at least, you know, growing up in America, living here, you know, it's like the, the stars are just so glorified. And it's like, so almost like they're on a pedestal, like they're like royalty, like they're like, yeah. this, you know, and it's like, they're people, everyone's people. You know, I don't care how rich you are, how famous you are, you know, we all sh and we're all going to die, yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. We're all mammals. So w whenever you have somebody who's achieved this level of stardom, at least to some degree, and then they're able to be so humble and reflective and, you know, you could see, you could see how she totally has defeated her perfectionist, right? Because she like is able to listen to herself without cringing. And that's really hard for any artist to do. Um, I was having this experience straight up when I was doing my live streams the other day. I made, uh, I made big videos of covers and, um, that I made saxophone covers and acoustic covers. And so I was live streaming and I'm listening along with everybody. And you're watching me listen to it. It was <laughs> weird listening to myself, you know, cause it's like I, every once in a while I'll hear that one note that maybe, oh man, I probably should have uh, <laughs> you know, and I want to be like she was, man, where she's just like so humble and self-reflective. And yet, you know, she you could tell she just had this Im immense gratitude for that performance. Yeah. You know, just such an inspiring teacher, man. Yeah. I, that's why she is my teacher. Have, uh, have you had much experience performing when you're sick? Oh, yeah. It's, Many times. Yeah. Um. I heard one one show. Um, 
and it mentioned being a teacher, uh, like, I guess I was getting flu shots, but I used to always tell people as a teacher, you're kind of like 40% sick from the end of October to the beginning of April. You know, I mean, just being around, you know, the, the students and everything. So it was this, uh, it was like the first weekend in December I played the show and my throat, you know, was sore all week. And so I'll, all I remember is backing off from the mic. <laughs> Yeah, like mm -hmm. a few times every song and just coughing and, and getting my air back so I could sing the next verse. And that was one of the, the toughest <laughs> shows I played. Mm. But, oh, um, man, it's tough performing yeah, when you're sick. Yeah, but it, it's funny she mentioned that energy level. And, and we, mm -hmm. like, uh, you were talking about being addicted to uh, live streaming, you know? And I remember the first time I live streamed on, on YouTube, it was like, you got that performance energy, you know, because uh, mm -hmm. there's something about that, you know, your body does take care of itself and get you through those times when you're not feeling a hundred percent. And and that was uh, an inspiring, you know, message for, for people to get, you know, um, mm -hmm. cause that, that's one of the fun things about performing and, and, and putting yourself out there is when you get those moments and you do persevere and get through and you look back and go, dude, that was awesome. <laughs> that was that was crazy cool what happened. And even when you didn't feel that great, you know, that's always cool moments of triumph, you know. Yeah, dude, it's it's tough, you know, being a performer too. Like, especially if you're relying on it for your singing for your supper, you know, you, you got yeah. a gig to, to, you know, and, you're, and you're, your gigs are figured into your monthly income, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you start to get, you know, if, if, if you put enough, put enough effort into it, you know, you start to get enough of an income, it can make you somewhat dependent on it. Like even if it's just for maintaining your gear without those gigs, then you don't have that gear maintenance money. And I mean, you know, strings cost money, reeds cost money, repairs cost money, you know, jacks and switches and knobs break and need to be replaced. Yeah. Sometimes guitars need refretted. I mean, like it's, I don't know, man. It's the, it's the whole thing, man. The whole thing. I cannot wait to get out and play again, sick or not, man. I don't <laughs> care. So everybody make sure you check out Kyle Walls' channel. Oh. Kyle's a great singer, songwriter, guitar player. This is this is my little commercial for Kyle Walls' music. His album Blood Candy is out now. It's really awesome. You guys make sure you check it out. Um, you can find him on all the uh, streaming platforms. Kyle Walls, just like it sounds, W-A-L-Z. Yep. And you can find him on Instagram too. R Kyle Walls, <laughs> just like I'm a, a pirate. pirate. <laughs> uh, R, I'll never forget that now. <laughs> yeah, I need to get a pirate hat. So, <laughs> so when we do that, uh, get into character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. R Kyle yeah. Walls, <laughs> get a parrot. <laughs> thank yeah. you so much for being here uh, with thanks, me. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Kyle, and thank you, everybody who's been watching and commenting and suggesting, and we're going to keep doing this live, and we're going to keep doing the uploads. So, everybody, make sure you check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Matthews Music License Studio, where you can sign up and get extra pull on these requests. If you're one of my patrons and you put a request in the chat, you get 10 times voting power. I'm going to be looking for those patrons. I know who you all are. You guys, you guys are my family. And... My website, if you're interested in music, music lessons from me, MatthewsMusicLessonsStudio.com. Thank you, Kyle, and we'll see you guys all next time see on you. The Sound Live!